Michael Burry, he's the guy who was uh, the focus of the big short. He says that this, what we are dealing with right now, the universal stay at home, is the most devastating economic force in modern history. He says it's man-made. It suddenly reversed the gains of underprivileged groups, kills and creates drug addicts, beats and terrorizes women and children in violent, now jobless households, and more. It bleeds deep anguish and suicide. That's probably the, the most accurate description of what has happened. Um, we, are, we are in a place that none of us saw coming just a few weeks ago. I have been uh, warning uh, since this became serious in China that it was not the actual virus that would, uh, would be something that we should worry about. It would be the consequences and the, the Great Depression that would come after. And we are headed that way. But we are also doing things uh, by choice that we, we have got to stop doing I mean, we've talked about China for years now and the way China uh, enslaves their people. And they are 1984, and we've been a brave new world. We're sliding into it th thanks to uh, technology. We're sliding into this, this uh, slave state or this surveillance state, Big Brother. And we're doing it. We're asking for it now. There is a... a experiment going on with the American people right now. How far can we push the American people on their civil liberties? How far can we do it? Unfortunately, um, pretty far, pretty far. We are teaching everyone the wrong lesson. All of these politicians are learning the wrong lesson from us. Last Thursday, Google announced its Community Mobile Reports Program. It's completely harmless. Google is just providing government leaders uh, data on where people are traveling during the pandemic, you know, for your safety. Now, they say this is all anonymous. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Google is providing data for states and counties to help governments understand how well stay-at-home orders, uh, orders are working, among other things. Google insists... The government cannot track you individually. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Here's the latest from the Kansas Department of Health and Environment. Kansas, a state, is tracking individuals using a GPS tracking platform called Unicast. Kansas is tracking individuals and their locations through their cell phones. They're using this program to grade counties on their social distancing effectiveness. So far, 45 out of 105 counties got an F grade. The state average is a C. Unicast gets its location data from other applications on your phone. So it's not legally required to notify you that you're being tracked by the government of Kansas. If Kansas can figure this out, uh, I'm pretty sure the federal government can find the loopholes. Did we ever give our government, our local, our state, our federal government, permission to track us and where we are at all times? Do you remember the outcry when uh, local police were putting GPS tracking devices underneath the cars of suspects. Do you remember what we used to say, how, how wrong that is? If you don't have a court order? Now our government is using cell phone data to track people. You know who else does that? China. And we don't seem to care. Now let me tell you what China is doing. China has now required all of their citizens, and tell me this isn't coming our way. I'm telling you this is absolutely coming our way. They're now requiring their citizens to install an app on their smartphone, which dictates whether they're allowed to move around in public. Each person is assigned a QR code uh, through the app, green, yellow, or red, and that indicates your health status. Green lets people move around freely. 
Yellow means you may be confined to home for seven days. Red means a two-week quarantine. So far, the Chinese government has not even told their own people how they classify people. Reports of people with red codes who have no symptoms of coronavirus, have never been tested for it, are rampant. Uh, By the way, there is no way to get your code changed in China. But here, I'm sure when Google or whoever else uh, develops this app for the United States, I'm sure there'll be a very simple way so you can, you, can, you can figure out why you've been categorized red or yellow. Now, China is using this color code app. It shares the personal data with police. The New York Times has described this and talked about a similar system in the U.S., that's, that would be used by the CDC, hooking up with Amazon or Facebook apps to track the symptoms and then start sharing that data with your sheriff's office. How long before one of these governors says, you know what, we need a color-coded phone app that tells you when you can leave your home or go to the store? How, many of, how, how long will it take before one of them hear this story and go, well, that's a good idea. We need that. It's for the, it's for the, the people's safety. We are becoming a, a police state. And if you think that these local police departments that are ordering all these drones, the drone companies cannot keep up with the requests for drones from U.S. police departments. If you think they're going to give up those drones after this is over, you're fooling yourself. Now, the Chinese government is offering $300 to anybody who reports on neighbors attending social events, refusing quarantine, uh, running a fever. Lower payments are offered for information about people trading wild animals, price gouging, you know, hosting family members visiting from another city. Oh, my gosh. Those darn communists turning neighbor against neighbor. Good thing that's not happening. Oops. It's happening all over the country. One of the worst things that we exposed last night on our Wednesday night special, if you're a subscriber to The Blaze, you can watch it now. It's a really good episode. We talked about China and what they're doing, where this came from, all of the, um, all of the evidence on how this did come from experimentation in laboratories in Wuhan. Um, but one of the worst things we talked about here in the United States was the business ambassador program in Los Angeles. Stu, I don't know if you've heard of this. This is one of the, this is one of the worst things I've heard. This, we are going to so regret everything that we're allowing to happen right now. Los Angeles has a business ambassadors program. They deploy city workers and volunteers with the mayor's crisis response team to businesses that appear to be out of compliance with the emergency order and with a goal of securing voluntarily compliance. If voluntary compliance is not achieved, the ambassadors then just share information with the city attorney and the LAPD for follow-up. The business ambassadors have visited 540 non-compliant businesses so far. 144 have received a visit from the L.A. police. Businesses are referred to uh, the police for misdemeanor filings. This is insane. And if you know anything at all about history, we are just repeating one of the darkest times in American history. In Minnesota, the government has a hotline that social distance warriors can tattle on their neighbors. Washington State has a website to report businesses that are violating the stay-at-home order. Uh, If you want to, you know, rat on Bob, the neighbor down the street that's having a barbecue that you weren't uh, invited to, you can go to the website. They're asking people all over the country. One lady in Connecticut got a golf course shut down 
after she saw people on the golf course and she said, people are dying and these people are out on the golf course and the, the, the state of Connecticut shut the golf course down because of one lady. What is wrong with us? How are we possibly okay with this?